well just lying here watching the football and um, can just see that uh, you know for the decades that they could have just had a couple of cameras on the goal line you know all the big tournaments that were decided by these um, uh, either handballs or poor refereeing decisions or you know goals being disallowed just takes a couple of cameras on goal and this is the first World Cup they've actually had um, the two cameras on the goal line and uh, for all it takes, all it costs, you know, uh, costs hardly anything to do that. So, you know, all the corruption in the game of, of, of soccer, all the people that are involved in the game of soccer, uh, all the illicit um, betting that goes on um, by, by professionals in the game. Actually, professionals in the game are not meant to bet on the outcome of matches, but most of them do. And they've been doing it in spades since the 1980s. And this is why the game of soccer, the game of football, is so corrupt. One of the most corrupt um, sports in the in the world. Because it's obviously the most played sport in the world. So it's the most corrupt sport in the world. And Seb Blatter asked him um, by many people to step down on his now fifth term as the pre president of U uh, FIFA, not UEFA, FIFA. And uh, he, he's just is, is raking the money in. He, he's just in there with the big boys, you know. Never really pressing for any sort of sporting things, you know, that, that will improve the game. It's, it's all just um, all just Nazis, basically. They're all making a lot of millions and millions of uh, lira out of it. Millions of pounds out of it. Um, and that's all they want to do. Uh, with the game of football or soccer, that's that's all it is to them. Um, big transfer fees for 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 good players. I mean, the players these days, you know, they seem they they are very good, but these a lot of them seem to lack character. Um, they're not at the same level of character as uh, Pele. Or going back to the sixties and seventies, actual caliber of footballers back then. They, they were real characters, uh, but not now. They're just overpaid. Um, I, you know, um, fools really. I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's as if uh, I know a few clubs actually try to educate their players. I know uh, Glasgow Rangers did. Like once uh, the player left the, the club, you know, retired at the age of maybe early 30s, the club would actually help the player get a career. You know, for for the rest of his life, because obviously football, soccer career is very short. But um, nowadays they're making so much money that when they retire, you just find them um, they're becoming alcoholics, they're becoming addicts, they're they're, they're just um, betting their money away. They're losing it all, and um, because they don't have any basic education, uh, most of these footballers. Okay, so uh, and you can see as well. That um, a lot of these uh, money men, a lot of these uh, higher class people are putting their children into train for football these days as well. A lot of these names coming up and many um, international uh, soccer players. Um, a lot of them are sort of just bred, you know, in there and, uh, you know, they're, they're just thrown in to the game of soccer to make money. And a lot of them aren't that good, but you can see that they're getting chosen over better players. And this has happened time and time and time again, um, even in the nation of Scotland here. Um, it's happened, and I can see, uh, watching the England game, that they very much missed David Beckham. England were very, very poor in the set pieces. They could have done with David, David Beckham actually playing in the team. As far as I understand, he's still fit, he's still playing. Even if they played them for the last 20 minutes of a game, he'd make a make a huge impact. But see, these managers don't just don't think clearly. You know, they think they think they got all everything covered, and they don't. Um, it was very obvious uh, what's missing from from teams. Every time I see them, I can see that um, they've they've left out players, or they've probably it's just been about money. It's just been, but you know, David Beckham's one of the most famous players of our generation 
and you would think if it was about money then he'd be in the team but he's not even in the team so it's very strange to me that they really missed him against Italy and um, they still don't have the handball rule um, altogether uh, as well you know if your arm is by your body and it strikes your arm then it's not a handball okay it's not a handball if your arm is out and the ball actually strikes your arm and it's in the way of like a potential chance or, or a goal even then a penalty is given and that player will either be sent off or booked depending on the severity of the actual foul okay a lot of referees don't don't even know these rules today they're still debating over if a handball is you know if the ball strikes a, a person's arm when the arm is, is close to his body you know is that a handball it isn't a handball okay but they, they still want to to spend five minutes at half time debating these issues and um, it's just as if like people deliberately don't want to know the rules of, of soccer or football because if they did, then there wouldn't be as much to talk about, you know. Everything would just be basically cut and dry. Um, there'd be not much controversy. Everything would be running too smoothly. So therefore, what would you have to talk about at halftime, you know? Uh, but it just seems that football punters just love controversy, love talking about things that... Um, don't really make sense and they don't even understand the rules in the first place but that's that's football people for you you know they're empty-headed overpaid idiots all right thanks for listening